Hello and welcome to the Watford Way podcast, the brand new podcast where we digest all the latest Watford news that has happened within the past month, whether it be transfers, managerial appointments, managerial sackings, or anything to do with Watford FC, we'll have it covered here on the Watford Way podcast. I'm your host, James, and today I'm joined by Toby. Toby, how are you doing today? Uh, yeah, I'm all right, thanks. Good stuff, uh, good stuff. You? I'm very, very well. Thank you. Looking forward to the new season. Um, and yeah, not long to go now at all. So very much looking forward to the championship season starting up once again. Lots to talk about today, including the fan forum. Blair and Ishmael being appointed as the new Watford head coach. Two new signings coming through the door. Craig Cathcart leaving Watford after nine years at the club. And we'll do our championship predictions, where we think Watford will finish come the end of the 2023-24 season. Probably a bit early to be predicting that, but we thought we'll give it a go and see how we get on. So, Toby, firstly, the fan forum, the first time Gino Pozzo has spoke to Watford fans in 10 years. Obviously, he joined the club 10 years ago. He did an initial interview to kind of introduce himself. And we've not really seen anything of him since then. I assume you read Andrew French's blog and you saw all the reaction to the fan forum yeah. on social media. What was kind of your initial reaction to it? Because it wasn't just Gino Pozzo there. It was Scott Duxbury, Ben Manga. I think Cristiano Gioretta was present as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, what was your what was your initial reaction to the fan forum? Um, at first, I thought it was actually I thought it was quite a good uh, thing that happened. I think um, I knew I know he like uh, like stood up to all the questions, answered all of them. They weren't necessarily the right answers, but I thought he done well to um, answer everything and just address everything that's going on. But yeah, I thought it was alright at first. But going into his answers, he just doesn't really take accountability of it at all. But... No, I mean, talking about accountability, I think someone uh, asked him very early on, actually, about his uh, policy of hiring and sacking managers. Um, and, you know, the general consensus from us um, and, and, you know, general Watford fans is that that's the wrong policy to, to use and that... Yeah. Um, you know, we really should look to give managers more time in the job. Um, you know, what was your opinion on the answer he gave to that question? Because again, as you said, he didn't really take accountability. In fact, in terms of the general consensus around hiring and firing managers, he actually said that was the right way to go and that he gave people enough time in the job. Yeah, uh, I don't think his answer was right, like, at all. Because, you know, like Javi Garcia, I don't think he gave him enough time. But he just, I don't know, he just doesn't doesn't see what's right about um, keeping managers and like sticking with them. And it's just, I don't know. Uh, he's, I'm not sure. Uh, he's just wrong in that aspect. But I can sense a frustration coming, coming yeah. from your voice. Um, other know, stuff yeah. they discussed, they obviously discussed the relationship between Mogi, Bayat, the uh, infamous football agent. We do a lot of uh, transfer business with, who I believe is under investigation in Belgium for uh, money laundering, allegedly, or something along them lines. Um, again, as you say, Gino Pozzo kind of refused to answer that question. Uh, there was promising stuff he said, though. I mean, I think generally for me, Toby, it did seem like he does care about the club. I don't know about you, but for me, that did yeah. come across in, in the way he spoke. He does care about the club. But it's just the way he's going about running the club that is that is the most concerning thing, really. I thought um, he sort of sees the club as more like a business than like actually properly caring about the club. Uh, I think he just wants to see like instant results rather than building it up gradually. Yeah, and yeah, it's it's just frustrating. Man. Uh, Scott Duxbury as well as, was there. What did you make of uh, his comments that he said? Scott Duxbury obviously focuses more on uh, kind of the financial side and the general running of the club. Uh, I think he seemed to give more grounded and sensible answers. Yeah, uh, I saw that he mentioned about um, that we'd be clear of debt, which actually seems like quite a good um, 
thing that's happening. So I thought that was quite good. I thought all of our, his answers, as you said, like were just quite good actually. And yeah, but I don't know. You don't, you don't just, seem that convinced, Toby. No, I'm not really. Because no. there was just a lot about him last season. I, I saw that he told like a fan to shut up and stuff. Yeah, I it saw just that, doesn't yeah. seem right. No, I mean, let's just hope that you know it's the start of something positive. I know towards the end of the fan forum, they mentioned they were going to restart the at your place events, which uh, we've kind of had in previous years, where I think every month or every every eight weeks or or something along them lines, fans would get the opportunity to meet a senior member of the club put the questions to them on a more regular basis, obviously, rather than having something that takes place every 10 years. So I think that, for me, is the one positive to to come from the fan forum. Uh, moving on, Toby, Valerian Ismail was appointed as WAF manager at the start of June. Um, and yeah, it's quite an interesting one, actually. Was he, for you, the best candidate available at the time for Watford to appoint. Obviously, he's kind of had a mixed time in terms of his recent career. He did really, really well at Barnsley. Uh, yeah. Then he didn't do so well at West Brom. He went out to Turkey, did OK. Um, yeah, what were your initial thoughts on the appointment of Valerian Ishma? Um When he got appointed, I didn't really know too much about him. But I thought, I thought it was promising. I thought... Um, we looked at like a few. I hope we looked at a few managers, and we thought he was for him. Uh, I know the Barnsley. He got them playoffs, and I think that's really good. I know he's got experience in it, in the championship and getting cubs there. Obviously at West Brom, he didn't do too great, but I think I think it was a, a decent appointment for what we need right now. And yeah, I absolutely uh, agree, and I think for me, it kind of signals a change of playing style, if you will. Um, which I think will take time. Obviously, we have to give him enough time in the job for, for that to become apparent. But Valerian Ismail, high pressing, uh, you know, high intensity, likes to win the ball back quickly on the front foot. Is that, you know, your kind of style of play that you want to see at Watford? Because I think we all want to see attacking football. We all want to see goals. Um, and Toby, if you look at some of the managers we've had previously, I mean, Claudio Ranieri, Roy Hodgson, yeah. Chris Wilder, Slavan Bilic, um, Ivic, you know, these are managers that, to me, when I read out their names, they don't scream superb, ticky-tacka, attacking football. Um, so, yeah, you know, Toby, what is your preferred style of play? And do you think of Leon Ismail uh, is going to play some more exciting stuff for us to watch in the stands? Uh, yeah, so I really, I do prefer, like, exciting play because I would like to just enjoy what I'm watching. And I think he does bring that, you know, I've heard that he's very like on the front foot right from the start of the game, which I think if our players are up for it, um, it would be quite exciting. But I've seen that he hasn't like um, got a plan B and doesn't really change his tactics too much. So that's like doesn't really seem very positive. But if his tactics work and it's exciting, then so be it question to you Toby do you think he will last more than 10 games in the job 10 games um <laughs> I, I think he'll last like till Christmas probably I mean that's okay. it and he's gone well you know what that is better than we've seen in recent times <laughs> that is better than we've seen in recent times so I suppose that that would be a definite improvement um and yeah, you know, in terms of, again, focusing on his style of play, do you hope and do you think that Watford will look to recruit the right players to fit that system? Because we've been linked with numerous players already in this transfer window, a very exciting Korean striker whose name I can't pronounce, so I shall not attempt to. Um, obviously, we've brought in Reese Healy and Tom Ince, which we'll touch on in just a moment. Um, you know, what type of player would you look to recruit? Because me personally, I've mentioned in, in previous videos on our YouTube channel, uh, we need to build that English spine and the English core of players who know the division, uh, you know, have that right mix of young, you know, exciting players, the likes of Espria, um, you know, mixed with experienced pros as well. So what is the exact profile of player that, Toby, you would, if you were, for example, the sporting director, you would like to bring into Watford? Um, I would like to see a more, like, promising right wing. I know we have Star already, but I reckon he, so he's leaving now. 
I think we need someone who's like more up for it, more up for the fight, more up for the challenge. Um, I've seen we bringing in um, Styles. Well, I, we're going for him, and I yeah, think yeah. he's got experience with um, Ismail, and he knows how he plays. And I think that's quite a good um, a, like signing if we make it happen. So I think that's quite a good step in the right direction. And yeah, I'm not really sure. I think we need more attacking threat because we lacked goals. And Keenan Davis didn't really help us at all last no, season. No, no. I mean, every time Keenan Davis got in front of goal, he seemed to not want to shoot. When what he, yeah. what we wanted him to do was just you know have a shot and see what happened. Um, and yeah, you yeah. mentioned Callum Styles there. That looks to be pretty much a done deal. Obviously, Callum Styles, uh, I believe, is currently at Millwall, but as you mentioned there, previously played under. Uh, Ishmael at Barnsley and did really well. I think he's like a left wing back slash, you know, centre midfielder. So he seems quite yeah. a versatile player. So hopefully, as you said, uh, he'll get through the door very, very soon um, to add to our current two new signings, who are Reese Healy and Tom Ince. So we'll start with Reese Healy, Toby. Uh, obviously playing for Toulouse in the French second division. I looked up his stats. He averages a goal. Um, every two games, roughly, which is, you know, a good return for a striker, albeit playing in the second division of French football, largely. Um, yeah, what were your initial reactions to Reese Healy? Because he's a striker, he seems to be a goal scorer, albeit he is coming off the back of quite a severe injury. Yeah, so um, his injury report, like, doesn't really look too great. But if he's coming off the back of that ACL injury and he, like, can hit the ground running, and just hopefully he's like the poacher that we kind of need and kind of wanted right uh, last season. I think I, I thought it was a very good um, signing. Obviously, he done well in League Two uh, for the French League. And yeah, I think um, he's the person that we need and we were lacking last season. So I thought it was a good signing. And do you think we need to maybe recruit more players in that striking position so if we think about it currently we've got vacuum bio uh reese healy toby adiemo i'm sure there's probably a couple of others i've missed out i've seen ray Manai has actually been at the watford training ground in the past few days so whether he'll be re-signed we'll have to wait and see but are we set in that position or you know the korean striker i mentioned earlier would you like to go and get one more uh, you know, marquee big signing you know a big player who's done it at the highest level would you try and you know target someone like that Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I think with um, Ishmael's like playing style, I've seen that um, he likes to change um, attackers very frequently, like at the hour mark. And then um, I think we do need more options in that strike uh, position, just to get us goals and just create options for us. But yeah, I think we do, I think we do need a few more strikers. Good stuff. At good least. stuff. The second signing of the window, Toby, is. Tom Ince coming in from recently relegated Reading, who of course are now in League One. A reported fifty thousand uh, pound like relegation release clause. So Watford have gone in, they've activated that, and Tom Ince has moved to Watford. Obviously, Tom Ince is the son of famous Manchester United footballer Paul Ince. Um, and last season, Tom Ince actually, Toby, had a very, very good season in a very poor Reading side. Nine goals, four assists, uh, can play in midfield, can play out wide on the wings. So again, as I mentioned with Callum Styles, very versatile in the positions he can play. Um, a bit older, you know, coming towards the latter end of his career, I saw a bit more, um, I wouldn't say anger from Watford fans, but a bit more concern in regards to this signing. Is that how you felt or are you feeling a bit more optimistic? Obviously, he signed a two-year contract. Um, so, yeah, how concerned are you or how happy are you uh, by the Tom Ince signing? Um, when the rumours rumors first came in, I was quite, I was quite concerned because I saw it was a three-year deal for a 31-year-old. And I was quite uh, underwhelming. It was quite, yeah, because yeah. I feel like we um we could have got better. But the two when it's like cut down to a two year deal, it's I can see it as a very decent signing. We need like we need options. We need um depth, and he as you said versatile. I think he'll just do well in um, and I think he's what we needed. Obviously he's English, for the homegrown, and yeah, I think he can get us goals. And he can just play 
in multiple positions and he just kind of what we needed right now yeah good stuff I absolutely agree and yeah hopefully I mean I think what posted the stat I think the last nine appearances Tom Ince has has faced Watford he scored five goals so hopefully um he can turn the goals against us into goals against the teams we are going to play in regards to his role and how much is going to feature this coming season so I suppose it depends on who else we bring in this transfer window um but do you see Tom Ince playing a big role in this Watford team you know do you see him starting alongside uh Ismail Kone or Imran Luza for example or do you see him maybe in more of a squad rotational role or more of a bench role in the Swatford team? Uh, I can kind of see him coming off the bench quite a bit more because, you know, he's older, he's got that experience and can sort of like help us steady the game and like win and keep us on track. But if he doesn't, if he starts most games, it wouldn't really surprise me. You know, um, he was in Reading, scored a few goals and yeah, but... I reckon if he comes off, uh, comes on the bench for like a spree and just uses his, his experience to help us just get through the game, keep us like on, yeah, keep us on track. I think he should be used more as a, as a bench player. But, okay. Yeah. I would largely agree with that. If you agree with that, let us know in the comments section down below. So that covers the two new Watford signings. Of course, today, the day we record this podcast is the 1st of July, which means if Watford choose to do so, um, I assume we'll announce either contract expirations. So Dan Goslin and Tom Cleverley, I'm sure we'll find out news around what's happening with them very shortly. Um, and if Watford are signing anyone on a free transfer, I'd assume Watford will announce that this weekend or on Monday as you're watching or listening to this podcast. So keep an eye out on the Watford socials because I'd assume some incomings or outgoings will be announced very, very soon. Talking about goings, Toby, yesterday evening, Friday night, I'm sure everyone was very sad to hear that Craig Cathcart has left Watford after nine years at the club. Um, my initial reaction was I was quite sad because obviously Craig Cathcart's been here uh, since I've been a Watford fan, since I was young, growing up through kind of the Premier League years. Um, you know, he's been a real kind of stalwart in this Watford side. He's never really gone anywhere. His injury record has largely been really good. He's a really good professional. He's scored some good goals. The one against Tottenham comes to mind, you know, a bullet header. Uh, I believe we won that game by two goals to one as well. Um, yeah, we just had some great memories of Craig Kafka at Watford. How would you assess the time at the club, Toby? Because he joined Watford on a free transfer back in 2014. Uh, and he's been, you know, absolutely fantastic ever since. So a few words on, on Craig Kafka from you, Toby. Uh, yeah, uh, it's quite upsetting for me because, you know, uh, from a young age, I kind of just remember him being there. And I've grown up with him, like, pretty much being there my whole, like, time supporting. But... I think he's been a very good um, like player. He's been just a servant for the club, like playing most games, getting a load of clean sheets. Yeah, it's upsetting to see him go, really. Um, what, what's your favourite Craig Cathcart moment? Do you have a particular tackle he made, a particular win, a particular promotion, a particular goal? Is there anything that kind of stands out in your mind? Uh, I'm kind of going to jump on yours about that Tottenham goal because yeah, I was there good. and I saw it live and, you know, it was just a good memory. Like, uh, yeah, it's yeah, it sad seeing him go. Yeah, I mean, Big Ridge Road that day was so good. I remember the sun was <laughs> shining. Uh, there was actual limbs in the lower grain yeah. Taylor stand where I was sitting. And you have to remember the lower grain Taylor stand largely uh, where I was sitting is full of like loads of pensioners and older yeah. people, let's say. Um, and even they were bouncing that day. So, yeah, it, it was a fun day out. Um, and, yeah, obviously, we wish Craig Kafka all the best for the future. Do you think he's going to kind of retire from this point? Do you think he's going to move to another championship side? What do you think is next for Craig Kafka? Because he's 34. Yes, he is at the latter end of his career. But I'm sure if he does want to continue, there's maybe another season or even two seasons um, in a tank for him at, at championship level, perhaps. Um. Yeah, I could see him um, signing for like uh, maybe like a lower end championship club, even as like a backup. I think he's got one more season in him at least, even if it's like as a backup to one of the starting centre backs. 
But I don't think he was going to re- retire from here. I think uh, he's still decent enough to be like, um, I don't know. But yeah, I don't think I don't think he'll retire from here. I think he's got another season in him. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And one last question on Craig Kafka. And one last question to everyone listening as well. So make sure to get involved in the comments down below if you are watching on YouTube. Uh, And I saw this debated on Twitter last night, actually, as I was scrolling through. And it was whether if, you know, is Craig Cathcart a Watford legend or is Craig Cathcart kind of a cult hero? Because I think there's certain people who you go, they're definitely a Watford legend. Jorelio Gomez, I would say, is a Watford legend. Troy Deeney, Watford legend. Leaper Bissett, Watford legend. You kind of get where I'm going with this. So is Craig Cathcart... Has he done enough to become a Watford legend or is he just kind of a cult hero? Everyone loves him, um, but he's not quite done enough to reach that legend status. What do you think, Toby? I think he's a, le- I think he's a Watford legend. I think um, he's been nothing but good for us like through ups and downs. Um, he's given us, I think it was, I saw like 70 clean sheets in his time. Um, I think he, he's been nothing but professional on and off the pitch. He's a good captain. So, yeah, I think he's earned the right to be a Watford legend for me. Yeah, yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. I mean, he joined back in 2014. Obviously, we won promotion back to the Premier League. Uh, he was with us with the relegation during COVID. Then we got promoted back with Zisco. Uh, got to the FA Cup final with us as well. Um, so, as you said, you know, he's been through it all with Watford. Uh, he's seen the highs, the lows and all the in-betweens. Um, so, yeah, I think we can both agree Craig Cathcart is definitely in the Watford legend category. Um, to end the podcast, we're going to talk about our championship predictions. Now, it might be a little bit early to do this. So whenever I record the next episode, we'll probably redo it then towards the end of the transfer window. However, I think this season, Toby, is potentially going to be one of the hardest championship seasons uh, we've ever seen because, obviously, if you look at the recently relegated Premier League sides, we've had Leicester come down, we've had Southampton come down, we've had Leeds come down. In addition to that, you've obviously got ourselves, Norwich, Coventry, Middlesbrough, uh, you know, all these other, you know, really good championship teams. Sunderland as well, you could put into the mix who also want to get promoted next season or at least make it into the playoffs. Um, Are you concerned about how strong the championship is looking at the moment? Because for me at the moment, I don't know about you, but I'd probably put Leicester City as favourites to win. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I think uh, it's looking very, very tough um, for this season. I don't see us getting automatics uh, at all. I think, yeah, Leicester... I think I think they're up there with their signings. Um, Harry Winks, I think it was. I think Connor Cody as good. well, I think, is coming in as yeah. well. Yeah, it was Connor Cody for like eight million, though. I know. I, know. I mean, he's, he's just a solid player. He's a leader as well, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, but I think that's a bit too much for him, personally. Do you reckon? But I'll, I'll yeah, take Connor Cody at Watford. <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, I think the Harry Winks signing for me is like pretty good. I know. Yeah. Uh, at a championship level, I reckon he's going to be very, very good and hard to um, hard to take care of. So yeah, I can see, I can definitely see them winning. But you got Leeds as well, were massive. I yeah, but they're they're in a bit of a mess at the moment. I don't know what's yeah, happened true. with kind of their ownership situation, but I don't believe they've made any signings. I think they've let a couple of players go. Mm-hmm. But in terms of like their summer preparation and you know how they're getting ready for the season, they seem to be. A bit of a mess so yeah let's do our top let's do our championship top three for example so let's do our top two automatic promotions huh. and then whoever's going to finish third uh you know top of that playoff race so toby i'll hand it over to you you are the guest Ooh. today so you've gone leicester city first who finishes yeah. second in the championship you based on what you've seen so far uh right now i think i reckon southampton get straight back up okay to be honest I don't. I don't see them. Um, like, I, I see them at least getting playoffs, but I, I do believe they'll go straight back up. Third place. Um, I don't see Watford getting anywhere near that. No, you're not. You're not going to be optimistic and just throw <laughs> no, it out there. No, 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 not after last season. I'm scarred. But um, <sighs> I, 
I see Middlesbrough getting another shot at it. Yeah, um, I mean, they've looked coming. good under Michael Carrick, haven't they, so far? Yeah. Um, there's also... I'm going to put Middlesbrough. I'm gonna, I, think, okay. I think they'll repeat their season again. That's a shout. I don't see... I see. I know you just said about Leeds, so, and I've seen like um, their owners put in their stadium as a stake or something, and they don't yeah. really look like a mess right now. Yeah. So you've gone. Get, let's let's get, repeat that. So Leicester City to win the league, then yeah. you've gone Southampton second, and then you've yeah. gone Middlesbrough third. Um, yeah. So that is Toby's predictions. I'm sure we'll come back to that um, the end <laughs> of next season, Toby. In terms of my opinion. Um, I agree. I think Leicester City, uh, you know, will, will win the league quite comfortably. If you look at their squad, I know they've obviously let a few players go. Um, James Madison going to Tottenham for, you know, a big transfer fee, £40 million. You know, Leicester are not going to have any financial fair play issues this season. You mentioned there, Toby, Harry Winks has joined them. Uh, Connor Cody's joined them as well. You know, these are experienced Premier League players, quality players, um, you know, will be quality at championship level anyway. So, for me, I think Leicester City are going to quite comfortably win the league. Second place for me is a tricky one. Again, I could throw Southampton in there and be quite boring. Um, I don't know. I think... I don't know. It's, it's a hard one for me. Yeah. Sunderland looks really good last season. Um, obviously, Ahmad Diallo did really well with them. So, depending on, you know, whether he joins back on loan, um, I think they could be up there in the flow of mix. I'm, I'm going to have to be boring and go with Southampton second. I do yeah. think they do hold a lot of quality. I know they brought in a lot of young players last season, season as well in the January transfer window. Um, so, yeah, Southampton will definitely be up there for me. Now, third place is a tricky one because... As a Watford fan and a delusional Watford fan, of course, I would love Watford to finish as high in the league as possible. Realistically, the business we've done so far, I don't think that is going to happen. Um, I'm going to go... I don't know. I think I'm going to go with Coventry, maybe. Really? Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a tricky one. I mean, literally anyone can finish in that third place yeah. position. So it's a bit pointless talking about it. But I think there's four or five teams who potentially could could be right up there. We've got Coventry. We've got Middlesbrough. Um, Birmingham City have made some really good signings actually so far this yeah. window. I know they've been down there um, the past few seasons. But I believe Ethan Laird joined them yesterday. The really promising left back for Manchester United. Um so, yeah, I'm going to refuse to comment on this one. I've got no idea whatsoever. Um, hopefully Watford will be up there, fingers crossed. Um, but, yeah, we'll have, we'll have to wait and see. Toby, do you have anything else to say on that? Um, I, I reckon Coventry will struggle, I think. Without well, your you, you reckon they'll struggle as in they, they may be in the relegation battle? No, I don't think they'll be relegated. I think they'll be like outside playoffs i reckon they'll be okay. they'll be fine there but without yokerez and hamer i think they're both leaving i reckon they'll struggle yeah okay well that concludes the first the watford way podcast uh toby thank you so much for joining me today it's much appreciated as i mentioned at the very start this will be a monthly podcast and it should come out the last Sunday of each month. And we'll kind of review the latest ongoings around Watford FC. So when the season starts, uh, yeah, we'll be talking about all the Watford matches that happened that month and kind of giving our thoughts on it. And of course, Toby, I'm sure, will be a regular guest this season. I'm sure other people will join us this season as well. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. If you are viewing us on YouTube as well. And we'll see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.